Uh, I definitely was looking and very excited to see him, but he talked about he had some complications. So still good stuff to Pandarian for coming out either way. And then great shout outs to Vegas for also being part of this event. Definitely some heavy West Coast hitters, but last, let's get right into it. It's going to be Razo versus Stroder. Stroder on the Pokemon Stroder trainer. with the PT. That is not what I expected him to start off with. I expected because in the in their earlier set up in winners, Stroder played Mario and Roy. Found some success taking a game with the Roy, but then switched back to the Mario in game four and ended up losing the set. Uh, so I would have expected maybe the Greninja to come out. Because uh, that's what Stroder's been finding success. That's what uh, he managed to take Larry Lur out with. I certainly wasn't expecting him to start this set off with PT. I, I, took, I could totally see it. Because if you look at PT being an almost all-around character set, you know, having the Squirtle, having the Ivysaur sort of definitely do good in mid-range. That's what you kind of want to have against Peach. That's the one thing she struggles in, is approaching in the mid-range. But where one thing where she doesn't struggle, that's where Ivysaur can actually accelerate, is approaching in that mid-range, using that Razor Leaf, using those disjoints that he has with those vines. He is one of those characters that can be a really big threat against Peach, specifically if she's on the air. You can see that landing with the forward air into the quick up air, and you can see that he's reaching with that upbeat strides. You've seen Razo's strides. So where do you think Razo's game plan is going to be here? Well, for one, he should probably get him off this Ivy Sword. Okay, that's good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's a back by Ivy Sword. <laughs> um, the thing about Ivy Sword, he has great hitboxes to catch float, a great projectile to catch float, and uh, good combos on it. So he needs to take care of that. But uh, Charizard, of course, he's strong. But yeah, these Peach combos are pretty disgusting on him. So I don't think Rousel is going to struggle too much in this. This section of the matchup, I think it's going to be down to uh, if Shroder gets like a hard read on Razzle and get like an early kill. But if he can't get that, then he, he's not going to have a good time <laughs> with Charizard, as you can see. No, he's oh, not. Snipe. Barely making it back snipe. to fly. That's... Okay. I hate to say it, but it looks like Stroder has almost a... Like, of course, Stroder does play the entire roster. He is one of those top players. But it looks like Stroder's knowledge of PT and this matchup specifically is very, very surface level. Because as soon as the Ivy Store came off the screen and Razor started shutting down his other Mons, Stroder just struggled. Um, and that's been the problem that he's been running into so far is, yeah, he knows how to play Charizard. Yeah, he knows how to play Ivysaur. Yeah, he knows how to play Squirtle. But he doesn't know how to play them in tandem. We're hardly seeing any Pokemon swaps. We're hardly seeing any combos involving more than one of the mods. And we're hardly seeing him able to get in past Razor's impeccable gameplay. Yeah, definitely. That's, uh, that's what makes Pokemon Trainer one of the most difficult top tiers to use. It's not just being skilled with one of them. You have to be equally skilled with all three. And uh, depending on the matchup and situation that calls for it. But, yeah. uh, we'll One see. thing about Rosmo in particular is he has this matchup knowledge up against Spanky from the Inland Empire. And Razo is definitely one of those Inland Empire monsters here in SoCal. He is taking a lot of names in his own region, but he's also done a lot of damage off to players like SoCal. He's even out of time stopped player like Fallen from such a high win streak. He's even stopped players like K9, Zen, you name it. Razo has that huge ability in him to understand this character. And like I said, him having Spanky in his own region to actually play against is going to give him a big boost in this matchup. Like you said, Soder's kind of probably taking this a little bit by how it goes, but Razo has this matchup download in the mind. Yeah, definitely, definitely knows what he's doing here in this matchup right now. And uh, yeah, again, outside of the Ivy Star, I just haven't really seen any of the Pokemon look really strong versus Razo in this matchup right now. And uh, yeah, I don't know, the fact that he's sticking with Charizard for so long in this situation, I think he's just banking on getting like, an early kill. Oh. And I mean, Charizard with Rage is not something that can be underestimated. Like, 42%? That's 4%. Um, but back air, center stage, catching Stroder, dropping a shield a little bit too early. Back air is going to connect, and Razo going to take the game one. No surprise for me. I mean, nothing against Jordan here. No bias. There's still a couple of It's just me understanding Razo. Watching this guy. Uh, when I first met Razo, it's really, really funny. Me and him first met each other at a melee tournament, and I told him I want to get into commentary, and he wants to get into Smash. Next thing I know, I'm doing commentary, and next thing I know, he's becoming one of the best Peach mates in the West Coast. And it's goes to show that Razo, even if we don't see him that much of an online presence in terms of online tournaments, he is somebody who loves to practice with his fellow IE members, but also a player that just has a lot of technical skill and understanding of how things work in the neutral. So it's going to be up to Stuart to kind of see how he goes up against him. 
But the one thing that's kind of a meme here in SoCal is the Inland Empire has an empire wall, and a lot of players, when they come out of state up against SoCal, they tend to fall up against the Inland Empire and they lose. So it's going to be up to Strider to see if he can actually break this wall because Razzle is one of the strongest members in the Inland Empire alongside players like Dom and alongside players like Spanky. We even have Sizzler from the Inland Empire, Elegant. just to name a few players. Elegant from the Inland Empire. They have but, such uh, a strong uh, level of presence, but hey, it's going to be the Greninja coming up here. And yeah, over here yeah. to see Strider. I mean, the thing is, um, it's a best of five, and Strider literally can play so many characters. Like, he has a lot of games to figure out which character is going to work the best against uh, Razo. But I think this is the character that, you know, got him on the map most practice he has with. I want to say, like, his best character, because he's so good with so many characters, but uh, see him pull out the Greninja here, probably his best bet. And it's already working really well. Trying to go for the Shadow Sneak kill off the side. Very early kill option if he can get that to work. Ooh. Nice. I actually do like Greninja in this matchup, though, just because he's so I fast. Think it's, the it's, a, it's a good choice because that's one thing that Peach kind of struggles against uh, is just fast light characters. But Razo is still doing a fantastic job of keeping Schroeder in check, not letting him get too far away with the lead. You know, only 30% on the moment between the two players. Razo coming back to stage with the Nair, but Schroeder with the fair instead and trying to catch. Ooh, what a use of upbeat there, actually, to put distance between the two and kind of mess up what Razo's game plan was at the moment. I'm very surprised you didn't see a forward smash from Schroeder on uh, that up smash that Razo was doing. Okay. This is going to be a oh, nice pummel there. I think that's what Strider was looking for. It's a little bit more percent to set up for the back row. And Ooh. the sneaky side B to kind of get up against Razo after the misorder from him. You can tell that Strider definitely understands. This probably might be the character that's going to put me right back on the point on the board here. And of course, unfortunately, though, unspaced, that means it's a grab for Razo and an opportunity for him to punish the landing towards center stage. That's the thing about Peach, too. You have to be careful where you're going to land against her because she has opportunity to Peach stop you from nice. landing and the snipes with the turnip. Please. That was beautiful edge guard with the turnips that comes from Razo. Oh, nice. Turnups were just fantastic from Razo because Razo, it seemed like Razo knew exactly what Schroeder wanted to do in that situation. Uh, called out the Shadow Sneak, then called out the Uppy. Got with two fantastic turnups, and that was the stock, but Schroeder still holding on to a heavy advantage here at the moment. Yeah. Oh, no down tilt up smash. Didn't get the right hit on the down tilt for that one, the combo. Okay. Oh. Oh, trying to get a counter, but getting punished with grab instead. And oh, Back in a wow! Yeah, what a shadow sneak from Schroeder to get back in past the past the turn up play from uh, Razo. Yeah, I really like these uh, surprise shadow sneaks coming out from uh, Schroeder. It's definitely catching Razo sleeping. He tends to just you know space with the hitbox at the ledge like most Peach players do, and he's just not ready for Greninja to end up behind him with a super strong move. It's a thing that Greninja catches a lot of players unaware uh, with, is the, the Shadow Sneak coming back on the ledge. Because a lot of people expect it to do exactly what it did in that situation and get caught underneath the ledge. A lot of people forget that if you do it earlier, it can go up on the ledge and behind you and get killed. 39% uh, extra credit on the board when Razo finally manages to take the stock off of Stroder. Uh, it's not looking fantastic, but it's definitely looking doable. Speaking of doable, suddenly we're even. Yeah, off of just one combo, Razo puts himself back in this game, but that's exactly what you expect from a uh, good Peach right here. You can never underestimate the combo game coming out, but Strider has been looking really solid in this game. He just needs to, you know, close off this space more, really just find these hitbox that can sell off the stock. That's a great down smash. Okay. Oh, the float mix up. Throws in respect to the hitbox, but oh my goodness. Man. Look at that quick burst option to finish the stock. You can see that Schroeder, he has the speed with Greninja. He has center stage. It's up to Razo to figure out how he's going to come back on the stage. And the minute that Razo picked the poor, uh, poor, poor option that he usually would, that was up to Schroeder to definitely capitalize and punish with that burst option. I think that's what I really liked about Schroeder in this specific game here. When he holds advantage, when he holds the stage, he holds it so well enough to see, okay, I have the whole stage. If you want to come to me with such a forward air, like you would usually see Peach or a turnip, Schroeder has all that space to actually get that big whiff punish. And in that situation, he just said, I'm going to walk up to you, dash attack, up smash, and call it the game here and put us up on the next one. Yeah, that uh, down to just back really to FD good too for uh, Greninja. Not only just for like kills and combos, especially in this matchup, since he's got a low profile under like these float setups too. Yeah, he can get a really good kill that way. 
But uh, yeah, back on FD. Oh, okay, okay, we're back, we're back. Very, very scary offstage situation for us, Broder. But uh, yeah, yeah I the lesser like... recovery would have died there. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But uh, I actually like this FD stage for Stroder in this matchup. I think all this space is really good for Greninja, not just for like his, his normal moves, but for the threat of the Warshirk and two. But uh, let's see what Razzle can do to adapt it. Razzle loves going for the charge up smashes in neutral. I think a lot of people either like don't respect how much in like that he doesn't have and they just run into it. Or they just, yeah, they just try to punch the in lag -like of it and then he throws out another move. So right, we're going to see that quite a bit. Oh, excellent MP hop. That's a nice change of there. First, I've seen it for Razo. And good on the toss. He's waiting for the land from the Greninja. Nice. He has so much time to mix up his landing after uh, doing that substitute. It's not actually easy to punish. Oh. Excellent patience. Let's see good. That. Yeah. Fantastic patience and fantastic punish from Razo there to catch him lacking after throwing out the substitute. Wazo going to, I thought for a second he fast fell too far and missed ledge. I was like, oh no, what a mistake. Yeah, but that was actually really good space. Not only to drift uh, past the down smash at the ledge, but to get back safely. Very good stuff here for Razo. Oh, no ledge come punish, but he's still throwing him right back off the stage. Oh. Man, so many hitboxes at the ledge. Troy's just trying to get back, but Ooh. there's that up smash. Calling out and, the roll, man. And that was smart from Raza because specifically he went for that turnip drop below the stage and that kind of forced specifically for Strutter to come back on the stage the way that he did. And then he just set himself up with a really good smart within roll distance. <laughs> and then we're also knowing the fact that up smash, it can connect from the bottom hip to the main hit and then take up the stock that way. Excellent play coming out from Raza all around. You I'm saw sorry, right I... there as Razo was floating back to stage, he was just kind of playing the you can't touch me. Yeah, it's just so there, funny. Dashing back and forth, Stroder finally going to connect with that fair, but two stocks left on the board. Razo is definitely the one in the position to take this game and face off against Varun in Losers Final. Yeah, and Lumbre, Lumbre in the chat, definitely one of his fellow IE brethren, he says that Razo's in his flow. And you can tell, he's feeling himself right now. He's got the lead, he's got the reads, he's got the flow, he's got a lot of things down here. Ooh. But it looks like Schroeder is looking to kind of oh. slowly stop that, and Razo with a quick reversal from the neutral air. Yeah, man, that was almost the start of such a good combo for Schroeder, but man, this slight timing uh, drop maybe. Made Razo get out of that and just continuing to build this lead. I do not like these substitutes at the ledge. I think he's expecting Razo to swing there, but he's been waiting and punishing that. So Schroeder, Schroeder hit him with it once. Uh, he he hit him with that substitute at ledge once and it worked very well, but now Razo is just ready for it and Schroeder's not going with something different. And that's like the the big difference here. Substitute is going to catch him off the turn up there. Razo spending a whole lot of time delaying off stage. I not going to be able to make it back. Stroder catching him with that pop up after the water gun, going to get the back air at ledge. And Stroder's definitely down, but not out. Could do something big here. Oh yeah, he's definitely proficient at these low percent strings with Greninja. Cannot count him out. Okay, at the ledge again here, Razo applying a lot of pressure. Oh, but catches the air dodge. Stroder getting a little bit, put in a panic situation at the edge, and uh, Razo is going to capitalize heavily, but Still, very, very uh, good match. Schroeder, man, he was uh, looking really scary to bring that one back. Yeah, you want to talk about proficiency here, Strides. Razo, with the proficiency on the recovery, he was very, very well aware of what Greninja can do with that hydro pump to come back on the stage. Razo was definitely always aware of, okay, this is when I'm going to use my up B. This is when I'm going to stall. This is how I'm going to get back up. Because not once did he fall to any of those tricks from Stroder. And if he did, he had such great DI that he was able to come back. Razo's ability to survive against Greninja at the sides of the stage when he's off of it were very, very impeccable. That was well demonstrated from Razo. Being in the corner versus either of these characters, honestly, is, is a bad situation. You don't want to be in the corner of the ledge versus Greninja, and you don't want to be in the corner of the ledge versus Peach. Um, and Schroeder switching it up to Mario again. We're going to see the uh, bit que morally questionable matchup between Mario and Peach. But uh, I can definitely see, like, after that game, Razor going up three stocks to one Schroeder going, okay, I'm going to switch it up again. Let's see what I can do here. So the thing about Schroeder's Mario... This Mario comes out exclusively on triplats, and he is the triplat uh, Mario God. <laughs> like, I've seen this guy pull out this Mario specifically on Yoshi's and Battlefield and just blow people up 
like like nothing. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised, even with how experienced Razo is on uh, this matchup uh, specifically, to see Stroder clutch this. Yeah, and when you think of Mario as a whole, as a character, right, in this specific meta, specifically with the SoCal rule set, and even some other rule sets, Mario has no bad stages. Any stage where Mario has a triplat or has any platforms around, it's really, really good for Mario. And even Final Destination. So, like, I that think, after Mario. I think in this rule set, Final Destination is Mario's worst stage, and that's yeah. saying something because Final Destination is not a bad stage for Mario. Exactly. Uh, it's really, really ridiculous, uh, especially if they choose to ban uh, FD. But Razzle was trying his best to make his comeback happen. I love that down air to get out, but wasn't able to find the up smash in time. Oh, he's swinging. Razzle's got to be careful. That up smash is, is looming very, very closely right now. Razzle living 124 and looking for this early early kill, oh. but not able to find it. Stroder going a little bit too far past ledge. Bad situation to be in, making it back safely. Razzle trying to prevent Stroder from getting back in. It's literally just going to be up to whoever gets this first kill, how the momentum of this match will go. Oh, doesn't catch the roll. Oh, getting caught out of grab there, not able to get anything up air, going to be parried. Neither one of them can get a hit here. The spacing at the lid. Bane, Stroder getting that down air connect, but still can't close out this stock right now. Raul is actually so patient in the corner. He's not giving Shorter an easy read to get the stock right here, but there's the classic back throw at the ledge. Gonna catch the get up attack. You know, Shorter finally, man, finally able to get that stock and feeling land. Right. Matter. Up smash. Immediate oh, refrag oh, coming out of Razo. I love what he did here with the Saturn just because he tossed it up. If Master Mario does try to make oh, up, Master Mario. I was gonna say if he tries oh, to make an it, over approach. It, the stick it, face. Oh no! That's the oh. worst. That's literally Razo not only got super lucky there, but great execution for him to capitalize on the luck because that was this Mr. Saturn into a stitch face. The shield break oh, into 74 friggin' percent from two hits. That's ridiculous. Oh man. That's really smart from Razo because that's why you saw him toss the Saturn upwards. If Stroder made that over approach and tried to run in shield or shield at the ledge, he had to worry about the Saturn dropping down. And if he doesn't do any of it, the Saturn is still on the stage enough for Razo to actually make a play. Oh, nice. He's dropping to the air, closing it out with the forward air. That ledge play was insane from Razo. Gentlemen, and, uh, I want you to consider the following. What if Razo had pulled a bomb? <laughs> I actually, man, like, Raz Razo is the RNG god, man. Like, this guy has pulled every single turn up at the moment it needs to come out. If he were to go to a casino, he'd come out winning big. That's all I'm saying. I actually think bomb wouldn't have been optimal because it would have just did damage and not. I'm not killed. saying like I'm not saying uh, it would have been, it would have been good, stitch face in the bomb. Oh no! Then yeah, then just we'd imagine have to take the that. Switch, imagine that situation. Yeah, we'd yeah. have to take the switch for sure, like for, for hacks or something. That's not that's not normal. Yeah, right but, now Razo fully lapping Schroeder in uh, in percentages on this final stock. Looking to finish this off wow. soon, going into losers finals versus Varun because at the moment Stroder's looking lost after that for Saturn stitch face uh, oh devastating combo. Stroder doesn't look like he knows what to do here. Yeah, and Rago is actually pressing whatever buttons he wants right here. He's just so comfortable in this match right now. You know, like I said earlier, Lumbre in the chat, he's got the state of flow, he's got the oh ball. Last, 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 why did you say that? Why did you say he was going to pull the bomb? I'm so powerful. Last. Check the switch. I'm right so Check powerful. No, no, it's not Check the switch, it's Check me. Check the switch. I did it. It's last, it's me. last, bro. He predicted this. I'm telling you, this what man, he's the odds? Hang on. Does anyone know what the odds of uh of Stitch Face and uh Stitch Face, Mr. Saturn, and Bomb all are individually? Because multiplying those three together. I don't know. Out. I and don't know. Odds of all three because what the I'm looking I'm going to like Smash Wiki and looking this up because that's nuts.